Hi everybody, John McElroy here talking all things automotive. And today I want to talk about the financial performance of the biggest automakers in the first half of the year because they finally reported all their numbers literally just days ago. Many of you probably remember the industry report card I put out at the beginning of the year that looked at how the top automakers performed in 2022. Well, now we've got the results for the first half of 2023, which is why I'm referring to this report card as the midterm exams. I've changed my methodology just a little bit. In the last report card, one of the categories I used looked at how much net profit each automaker made on each vehicle that it sold. This time, instead of net profit, I'm looking at operating profit per vehicle. That's because BMW and Honda make lots of motorcycles and I didn't want to include the money that they made on them in the results because that would be unfair to everyone else. And they only report the operating profit they make on their cars, not net profit. So I used operating profit for everyone. I also dropped Renault from the report card because I wanted to make a list of the top 10 automakers in the world by sales volume, but I also wanted to include Tesla in the list because everyone wants to know about Tesla. I see that some reports still combine Renault and Nissan and Mitsubishi sales together, but I feel that's a mistake. They used to be called an alliance, but that was a name only. There was no P&L for the alliance, no annual report. It was just an alliance in name only. So I think we have to look at each of them separately, not together. After all, General Motors and Honda are doing a lot of work together. GM's even going to make cars for Honda, but we don't combine their sales together. So that's why I dropped Renault and kept Tesla. But other than that, everything in the report card is the same as before. So let's get to the numbers. And we start out by ranking the OEMs by sales volume. And by that measure, Toyota was the biggest car company in the world with 4.6 million vehicles sold. With the Volkswagen Group, which includes VW, Audi, Porsche, Seat, Skoda, Bentley, Lamborghini, and Bugatti, in second place with 4.4 million. Impressively, the Hyundai Group, which includes Hyundai, Kia, and Genesis, is now the third largest automaker at 3.6 million, followed by Stellantis at 3.2 million. General Motors is in fifth place with 2.9 million, and then Ford at 2.1. Nissan and Honda are extremely close at 1.8 million. BMW tops Mercedes, 1.2 million to 1 million even. And Tesla came in at just under 890,000 vehicles sold. Of course, another important way to rank the top car companies in the world is by how much revenue they generate. And this shakes up the rankings. Now, the Volkswagen Group jumps to the top of the list with over $171 billion generated in the first half of the year. Toyota drops to second place at almost $150 billion. Stellantis moves into third place with $108 billion. And then we drop down to a cluster of Ford, GM, Mercedes-Benz, and BMW, all grouped in the $80 billion area. The Hyundai Group is only in eighth place, followed by Honda, Nissan, and Tesla, when you'd expect Tesla to be last because it's the smallest of them. Another fascinating way to look at the automakers is how much revenue they generate for each vehicle they sell. And this is something of an eye-opener. Mercedes tops the list, earning over $81,000 in revenue for every car it sold. That is substantially better than BMW in second place at around $57,000. Tesla leaps into third place just behind BMW at $54,000. And then there's a big drop down to Ford, the Volkswagen Group, Stellantis, and Toyota in the $30,000 segment. GM is in eighth place and one thing that hurts GM are all those cheap $5,000 ruling mini EVs that it sells in China. Nissan is right behind GM with another drop down to Honda. And I found it very surprising that the Hyundai Group was in last place with an average of only $19,000 in revenue for every vehicle that it sold. Remember, Hyundai and Kia sell a lot of cheap cars in developing markets around the world. Okay, generating revenue was one thing. But how much money did each automaker drop to the bottom line? So, let's rank them by net profit. Toyota was the most profitable car company in the world in the first half, putting $13.8 billion on the bottom line. Impressively, 
Stellantis is in second place with 12 billion. Then comes VW at 9.3, followed by Mercedes and BMW. Despite generating the least amount of revenue per vehicle, the Hyundai Group was the sixth most profitable automaker, followed by Tesla in seventh place. As you'll see in this chart and in the following ones, Tesla's price cuts really hurt its profitability and its rankings. GM and Ford were in eighth and ninth place in terms of profitability. And maybe they ought to be pointing that out to the UAW because they're not very competitive. At the bottom, you'll see that Honda is there, which is recovering from a disastrous 2022, and Nissan, which still has not recovered from the Carlos Ghosn scandal. Net profit is an important measure, but it can be affected by financial charges or write-offs that don't really reveal the financial efficiencies of how well a company ran its operations. That's why Wall Street analysts like to pay a lot more attention to the operating profit. And here's another eye-opener. On an operating profit basis, Stellantis was number one in the world with $15.5 billion. Toyota and VW were in second and third place. Then comes Mercedes, and I was very surprised to see that the Hyundai Group outperformed BMW. Not by much, but impressive nonetheless. GM was in seventh place, followed by Tesla in eighth and Ford in ninth, and not surprisingly, Honda and Nissan were at the bottom. Looking at operating profits is very helpful, but Wall Street analysts like to bore down even deeper and look at the operating profit margin. That is, what percentage was the operating profit of the total revenue that was brought in? And on that basis, the Hyundai Group jumps to the top of the list with a 15.3% operating margin. Stellantis was in second place at 14.4%, followed by Mercedes at 14.1%. BMW was in fourth place, followed by Tesla in fifth. All of these companies had double-digit margins, which is what the investment community wants to see. Everyone else was in single digits, including Toyota, Volkswagen, GM, and Ford. Again, GM and Ford should be pointing out these weak returns to the UAW, which accuses them of being so greedy. And once again, Honda and Nissan are at the bottom of the list. And now we get to the chart that I think everyone finds the most interesting. How much profit did each automaker make on each vehicle that it sold? Again, as I pointed out at the beginning of this video, this is based on an operating profit per vehicle. And my, oh my, oh my, look how far ahead Mercedes is compared to everyone else. It made well over $11,000 in profit for every vehicle it sold, far ahead of BMW at $6,000. Tesla is only in third place at $5,700, and it's fallen so much because of all those price cuts. Impressively, Stellantis is in fourth place, which is really impressive for a full-line manufacturer. The Hyundai Group beat out Volkswagen and Toyota, while Ford beat out GM. Again, GM's hurt by all those cheap, wooling mini EVs, which by my estimate, only generate about a $20 profit per car. Nissan and Honda are at the bottom of the list, and I was shocked to see how little money Honda made on its vehicles. Only $190. Okay, now we get to the last chart and the most important one. This is where I rank the automakers by their overall performance. And my grading system is easy. There are 11 automakers and I ranked them in five categories. Net profit, operating profit, operating margin, revenue per car, and profit per car. The company at the top of each category got 11 points. The next one down got 10 points and so on down the list. Then I added up all their points from each category. And by that ranking, the best run car company in the world for the first half of 2023 was Mercedes-Benz with a total of 47 points. Amazingly, at least to me, Stellantis was in second place with 45 points. Then came BMW with 40. Toyota just eked out ahead of Volkswagen, and Tesla was behind them, with the Hyundai Group not far behind. Ford and GM were in 8th and ninth place, again, fodder for them to use as they bargain with the UAW, and Honda and Nissan came in last. And so there you go. These are not my opinions. This is not any editorializing. The numbers tell the story of how the top automakers in the world did on their midterm exams.